So if you just bought the Sony A95L and looking for some help in getting everything set up and going well, uh, this will be the video for you. It's going to be a fairly long, about a half hour video, but there's a lot to cover. Uh, and I'm also going to show some ways to fix some of the bugs and issues uh, with the TV, as well as how to set up some of the most common devices. So if you're looking specifically for picture quality settings, those are going to be in a separate shorter video. Uh, again, this is just going to go through the full setup process, as well as getting your devices in order, uh, as well as like I said, covering some of the bugs and issues and ways to address them. A lot of the menus on this TV are also different from other Sony models. So I'll be going through all the menus pretty much and showing all the main stuff that uh, you probably will need to know where it's at. All right, so we're gonna go through a quick unboxing and then grab your remote and get ready to uh, follow the steps. So first thing, if you have straps on your box, you don't need scissors, you can just flip them over and pull on those tabs to rip them off. Uh, so this is the 65 inch model. I also have a 77 on the 65 inch. You get pretty much all the same stuff. However, the legs can only go in the outer edges position. There's no middle position for the legs on the 65 or 55 that's reserved for the 77. You do get two different height positions for it though. So if you need to raise it up for a sound bar or something else, you can do so. Uh, for me, what's kind of funny is my entertainment stand in this room uh, was not quite wide enough for the 65, but had it been the 77 back here and I could have put the legs in the middle, it would have fit the stand better and could have actually sat there. Sony does not put a plastic film on the screen, just this white film, so be careful when handling it. Uh, this is what the coating of the screen looks like when hit by a very bright, close light. Uh, I'll get into reflections in the review. All right, now quickly, the 77 inch, Sony puts their VESA mounting holes very low on their TVs. Uh, so for me, when I took my other TV down and my bar was there, it mounted the TV way too high, even adjusting the bars as low as possible. So I did have to move the whole mount down. Now for cleaning the screen, I recommend a thick high GSM microfiber towel like that and getting a little spritz bottle for distilled water. Okay, so you can see here, I'm already signed into the TV, but what I wanna do is do a factory reset so I can go through the whole setup with you but I'm also doing it this way to show how to do a factory reset so you can do it two ways first if you need to remove your Google account for any reason uh, the only way to do so is a factory reset it will force it when you go to remove your account uh, so the other way is to just go in the normal settings menu and go all the way down as I show here uh, to do the factory reset uh, so either way is fine uh, just showing that if you do remove your account, it will force a reset. Uh, now keep this in mind because I am going to recommend that you do a factory reset after you first set it up and get a firmware update. That step helps with some of the bugs. Uh, so after initiating the factory reset, it's going to take a little bit of a black screen and then it's going to reboot up uh, and show all this kind of stuff and then put you back into the initial setup area. So if you just set up your TV, this is where you're going to start is with the screen. So now I'm going to show how to set up everything from here on out. And I will remind you at a certain point in the video when you should do the factory reset. First, if you want to set up as a basic TV, not a smart TV, you can do that. It still offers to let you sign into the internet, uh, but you can go to the bottom and skip. Uh, from there, it's just a few agreements and then you can set it up as a basic TV for just like HDMI devices or so on. Uh, but I'm going to set up the normal way, logging into Google. So you can do it with the phone. I prefer to do it with the remote on the TV. Um, I actually find it doesn't really take any longer that way. And then I don't have to have the app on my phone. So this initial part is you going through and agreeing to the Google services, getting logged into the internet, picking if you want any apps installed. But I prefer not to do it on this step because it takes the initial startup longer. Uh, but once you're done with that, then you now have to basically kind of do the same thing again, but for Sony. Uh, so now you go through the Sony agreements, as well as some of the basic stuff that Sony lets you do during the initial setup. So if you want all the features, all the apps and everything that the TV is going to offer, you basically have to agree to everything. It then tells you about the voice recognition mic on the TV, and it shows you here where you can disable the power saving, you can set up devices, 
uh, for me, I had a receiver, a Sony receiver. Uh, so I was able to quickly uh, just make sure that the connection between it and the TV was working fine and everything was detected. From there, at this step, it doesn't let you turn off the ambient light sensing. So even if the camera is not on the TV, that's still going to be on and it doesn't let you turn it off here, which is kind of a downside uh, because they hide that later in the menus. So then it goes through the gesture controls and the camera stuff. You can see I do not have the camera on. I'm not going to use it. Uh, then you can register your TV for the warranty as well as your bonus stuff like the Bravia Core movies and things like that. Uh, if you have air kit and all everything, that's here as well. Samba TV is just the way that it tracks your usage to try and make recommendations closer to what it thinks you would like. That one I do decline. So once this is done, I'm gonna show where to go for a firmware update. And then after the firmware update is where I would suggest that you do the factory reset and go through everything that we just did here again. From there, you can follow the rest of this video uh, for all of the other setup suggestions. Uh, but doing that factory reset after the firmware update really will help the stability of the system and just be less buggy overall. At least for most people, that's what they have experienced. So from the main settings menu, you're going to go down to system. And then in system, you're going to go to about. And then you'll see system software update. So this one was up to date. But if you do have a firmware update available, then it will show and it'll take about 10, 15 minutes for it to download, turn TV off, turn it back on, then do your factory reset. All right, now we're just gonna start going through the rest of the menus. So if you go back to system and go down, you'll find the ambient mode. So this is what lets you play art and stuff on the TV uh, when it's not being used. Uh, all kinds of settings here for it to show the weather, time. You can use your own pictures, an art gallery, and so on. Under power and energy, you can change the power on behavior to go to your last input instead of the home screen. Uh, so if you're not using the built-in apps, that's a good option. So now here's the energy saving options. So if you want to make it where the TV doesn't turn off or does turn off after a certain amount of time, uh, this is where it's at. We already turned off power saving in the initial setup. Uh, but however, again, the ambient light sensor is still on, so we will get to that in a moment. You can get there direct from the Eco Dashboard, or I will show another way to do it. Uh, as you go down, there's many different options here, but this is mostly stuff that most people won't care about. Uh, there is a picture adjustments lock, so it, once you're done with all your settings, if you want to make sure no one touches anything, you can put on the lock. If you back out of the system settings, you'll find the remotes and accessories. So if you wanted to pair a Bluetooth device, a different remote, or if you're gonna set up the Bravia cam, that's where the settings are. So back on the home screen, if you go to apps and then go down to this bar, uh, then type in Calman for Bravia. I've tried to voice search this. Anytime I do, it somehow hears Cowman. But anyway, uh, so once you have that installed, you just hit OK on the screen, and in the top right is an IP address and a port number. From here, on a device using the same Wi-Fi or wired network connection, so the same LAN, so if you have uh, multiple different networks in your home, just make sure it's on the same one. So you do this from a computer and go open a browser, or on a phone and open a browser on your phone. Then you just type in the IP address with the colon and port number, and it won't actually load anything, but you'll see where that not connected was. It like flashed for a second. And once you do that, it will now unlock two additional picture modes, custom for Pro 1 and Pro 2. They are the functionally the same thing as the professional mode. So it gives you three modes uh, that are the same. And we're gonna be using those modes in the settings video that follows this one. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to the Apple TV and it goes through some basic settings here for the Apple TV. You can see that first it wants to offer Dolby Vision. Uh, you can click no here. The TV is going to also tell you you can hit the menu button uh, to control the device. You don't, you'll actually get full control pretty much over the device, but if you need additional kinds of commands, there's more here under the menu. And there's also other stuff like the stretch and display area, HDMI range, all of that is in this menu. 
Um, anyway, so I said to not accept the Dolby Vision prompt on the Apple TV because we're going to just enable match content in the settings on it. Um, also, if you go to the end of the menu list, you'll get the full input signal information screen. You see the remote is backlit and now I can control the Apple TV where basically most devices are controllable with the Sony TV without taking any additional steps. So before we go any further, we need to go to channels and inputs under the main settings menu and go to external inputs and we need to do the HDMI settings for the different HDMI ports. Now there's a little bit of an issue here because the TV does now support 4K, 120Hz with VRR and Dolby Vision, everything at the same time, which means you no longer have to go in and change the HDMI setting when you want to change from 120Hz to Dolby Vision like you had to on the other Sony models with HDMI 2.1. The issue though is that was not available at launch, it was brought in a firmware update, and since that update has come out, if you have certain AVRs or receivers or soundbars, uh, that for whatever reason is not working, but other AVRs receivers or soundbars, it does work. So with a Sony receiver or soundbar, with an Onkyo or Pioneer receiver, it all works and you can just set the port three, your eARC port, to enhanced format 4K 120, and it will still be able to send Dolby Vision. Whereas if you have a Denon, Marantz, or some other types of receivers, um, then for whatever reason, uh, they are not able to work with the TV in that way where you would still have to go back and change your port setting from 4k 120 to just regular enhanced in order to get Dolby Vision. So I recommend putting all the ports to on at least enhanced um, unless you have an older device that's not compatible. Alright so then if you pull up your inputs and then go all the way to the right then you can edit. So now you can remove inputs that you don't want to see uh, or you can add some that may not be showing up when they should be. You can also add apps directly to your inputs. So the Bravia Core app, for example, is not available on any other device. So I'm going to add that to my inputs list. And then you can just go through here and see all the options and decide what you want in your input bar. Now I also am going to remove some stuff that I don't care to see, uh, like the recently used. I'm gonna take that off. Uh, just to make it a little bit cleaner. Now we can also change our settings bar. So same thing, go all the way to the right and you go to edit and now we can add picture settings to our settings bar to go straight to the picture settings instead of having to go through an extra menu. Now I'm going to remove options I don't need like brightness, power saving, adjust according to position, sound field, like all this stuff I don't need to see. Uh, so I'm just unchecking the ones that I don't need there. So next we're going to go to picture and sound and disable the ambient light sensor and some other things here. So first, if you did want to go straight to the picture settings, this was the other way to do it, but now we've added that to our settings bar so we don't need to come to this menu to get there. This is, however, where you can adjust if you want settings for a specific HDMI port or even a specific app if you use built-in apps. We're also going to find our audio settings here and definitely want to check in here when using external audio. So the acoustic center sync, for example, I do use because I have a Sony receiver. I'm gonna turn on AV sync. Uh, so this is when using the eARC to make sure that the lips sync automatically. Uh, I'm gonna switch my audio output to pass through. And then eARC is on auto or off. So auto just means on uh, basically. And that's all I needed to do here for audio. Uh, you can also do Bluetooth sound settings here, uh, and then if you were to use the TV speakers, there would be controls for adjusting those speakers. And then also you can see Ambient Optimization Pro, that's the light sensor, that you really need to turn off uh, if you want the full brightness of the TV. Then under Expert Panel Settings, I do turn off the Pixel Shift, 
Uh, it does not move the image enough to prevent burn in, it just soften edges, but it does move it enough to be kind of annoying and not give you the full size of the TV. There is no longer a game or graphics picture mode and instead it's under the content type. So you change the actual content type to game or PC. Now that we're in the picture settings, you can see where if you toggle through the picture modes from this menu, it usually lags behind and gets kind of slow. Um, but you know, as long as you like let it sit for a second, it should catch up. Now professional mode is the most accurate mode out of the box. And if you follow the steps earlier in the video to unlock the Pro 1 and Pro 2 picture modes, those are the same as professional. So now we can have a day and night mode right next to each other that are the same. Now cinema mode, there's a few things with cinema mode. Okay, so the out of the box, it's gonna have contrast enhancer on medium, which not really a good thing for accuracy. And under color, it's gonna have live color on low. Once you turn those off, the mode is fine to use, however, I have noticed that in a measurement, so if you measure the center of the screen with a full screen window, cinema mode will actually measure brighter than professional. However, that is because it's actually darkening the outer edges of the screen to make the middle of the screen brighter. So it's kind of forcing a vignetting effect to have more energy to push to the center of the screen. So some people may like that and may want to use cinema mode where the center area of the screen is gonna be brighter than the rest of the screen. Um, but if you want consistent brightness and which is gonna be the more accurate way, then stick to professional or the custom modes. Now again, I'm not gonna go into all of the picture settings that I'm going to recommend in this video. This video is already long enough, uh, but I will have a follow-up video just focused on what the picture settings should be. Also, if you use professional mode, it's targeting 100 nits out of the box, and if that's too low, turn on the peak luminance setting. So over on the Apple TV, you can see we are in 4K SDR, which allows us to set it to RGB high, and then we turn on match frame rate and match content. This way, whatever app we go to and whatever content we play, whatever it's supposed to be is what it will be shown in. So you can see right now that what's playing is very choppy and very unwatchable. Uh, this is a bug that can happen for some reason uh, with various content, whether it's streaming or disc, whether it's Dolby Vision, SDR, HDR, doesn't seem to matter. It just can happen at random. Uh, so if this happens to you, the way you can fix it is to hold down the power button for a couple seconds and then it says restart. Go ahead and hit that restart and it's going to reboot the TV. It will not change your settings or do anything like that. Uh, the only thing is when it does boot up, it will boot to the home screen, not your last used input. Uh, but once you do this, then you go to play your content and it should be fine. Now, how often you have to do this is completely random. Um, it's happened to me probably three times over a few weeks of having the TV. So not that often, uh, but just letting you know, if you do have that issue with the content not playing uh, correctly and looking very choppy and messed up, uh, this is how you do it. fix it. Just hold the power button, hit restart. It takes, I'm showing the full length here of how long it takes to do it. And then you're loaded back into the home screen. Now after doing this, the menu system is also probably going to be a little slow and choppy um, for a few minutes. Uh, but once the TV warms back up and gets back to normal, then everything should speed back up and be fine. All right, so now that that kind of interrupted my flow with the Apple TV, uh, we are now going back to the Apple TV, back to Netflix and playing The Witcher. So as most of you probably know, all HDR content on Netflix is in Dolby Vision. So now the TV has three Dolby Vision modes, vivid, bright, and dark. Now at the time that I recorded this, there was still some more issues between the different Dolby picture modes and the tone mapping settings not working on them. However, that was fixed in the latest update. So you can see here when I changed tone mapping in bright, it wasn't doing anything. Now it does. So you don't have to worry about that. That has been fixed. So Dolby Vision Dark is the most accurate of the three options. However, it is not perfectly accurate and it does uh, over brighten the image a bit so turning on gradation preferred can help make it more accurate however 
if you have a brighter room, you have lights on and so on, you don't have to do that. You can leave gradation preferred off and it'll just be a little brighter than it's supposed to be, but that'll help with the brighter room. For motion, I personally would do smoothness at one and Cinemotion on low. If it's on high, then that can cause interpolation artifacts or soap opera effect, uh, as well as some stutters or frame skips. Uh, you can use off as well if you know that it's a 24 FPS source. So now I've switched over to YouTube and YouTube HDR is gonna be in HDR 10. I haven't yet switched it out of cinema mode, but the rest of this is still the same. So you use either professional, pro one or pro two. For HDR tone mapping, if you set it to brightness preferred, one, it's not gonna be accurate, but if that's what you like, uh, you can use it. It's just not going to take effect instantly. Uh, so you need to toggle it and wait a few seconds. Then if you go to back to gradation preferred, you'll see the shift and what it actually did. All right, so now I'm going to head over to the Xbox and start doing some game settings. So the Xbox is running at 4K 120 and you can see we have all green check marks. This again is with the more recent updates, which does have the Dolby Vision 4K 120. Uh, however, I don't really recommend gaming in Dolby Vision. There's only a couple of games that actually take any kind of advantage of it. And on this particular TV, and well, pretty much most TVs, any of the Dolby Vision game modes aren't necessarily accurate either. So it's up to you if you want to use it or not, but it's there. I recommend HDR 10. When you set up the HDR game calibration or the HGIG menu as some know it, uh, that is for HDR 10 only, not for Dolby Vision. Uh, so here on the Xbox, when you go in to set it up, if you pull both bumpers and triggers, you'll get the menu in the top right that tells you the luminance for each. So you'll see that it wasn't in the game mode until I loaded this. This counts as a game, so the TV automatically switched into its uh, game content type. From here, we can hit the uh, menu button on the remote to pull up the game bar uh, to quick toggle on VRR. Uh, that did kick it out of HDR, that's just a handshake issue with the Xbox. No problem, we now have 4K 120 VRR, HDR, everything's fine. You can see there's black equalizer, crosshair, crosshair type. Um, this is stuff that's optional if you want to use it. Black equalizer will raise the black level. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a thing that if you wanna see into the shadows, you can use it. Uh, it's not gonna be for accuracy or image quality though. The motion blur reduction does not work with VRR. That's the black frame insertion. It's one or the other. So now on the Xbox, uh, and I'll show also on the PS5, and then any games that we get to, I'm gonna recommend setting the peak luminance to 1600 nits. Uh, as far as the TV, only really going to focus on the standard game mode. The other option is like RTS and RPG or whatever. Uh, they're just different presets. You could make them all the same. Uh, or if you want to make one brighter than the other for SDR games or something, you can do that. Now I do recommend, or what I do anyway, is turn on reality creation to auto and leave smooth gradation on low. And I'll talk about more of the settings in the picture settings menu in the next video. Uh, but over on the Xbox, the first dark screen, you just want it to say 0.000. And then on both of these max luminance screens, we're going to set them to 1600. That's because the TV is capable of highlights that are just over 1500 nits. So it makes sure you have enough headroom to hit the 1500 nits. And it does do that in game mode as well. Uh, and then also the TV with gradation preferred is going to be tone mapping. So if at any point it goes beyond what the TV can do, it's still gonna to be tone mapped down to show the details. And if you're playing a game that doesn't support HGIG, which is most games, uh, or if you're playing a game that you didn't set up the sliders correctly or doesn't have HDR sliders or whatever, um, like God of War, for example, you know the tone mapping actually helps. So this is how I recommend setting it up. Brightness preferred is just going to cause it to clip earlier and brighten up the EOTF or the mid range of the image. And if you do enable Dolby Vision Gaming, you'll see there's no other setting like picture mode options. It's just the one Dolby Vision game mode locks you into it. Uh, and it is gonna be a little bit brighter than it should be uh, with the out of the box settings. Setting gradation preferred appears to make it a little bit better. It's not measurable right now. Um, but again, I don't really recommend it. So even though like Destiny 2 here is in Dolby Vision, it's not a native Dolby Vision supported game. So there's no real benefit to do it. You still have to set the slider in the game. 
The only games that I've found so far that actually seem to support Dolby Vision is Halo Infinite and Armored Core 6. Um, so anyway, back to if a game has a slider, just like the Xbox setting, I'm going to recommend setting it to 1600 nits. Uh, if a game like Destiny has a midpoint that's affected by where you set the peak brightness, you'll just have to find per game you know, what works best. Now over on the PlayStation, it's going to automatically adjust the settings uh, to 18 clicks from the bottom on the white screens, which is actually fine. Uh, so that's going to be as close to about 1600 nits as we're going to be able to get. Uh, you even could go 19 clicks, which is like 1750 or so because it is tone mapping and 18 clicks, I believe is 1500 either way. So both of the white screens, you know, do 18, uh, maybe 19. And then on the dark screen, just go all the way down darker. So that black is black. And for the video output settings on the PlayStation, pretty much everything on automatic is fine, except the HDR we wanna have uh, set to on when supported. It does like to trigger it to always on for some reason, uh, but that's pretty much all you have to do here. So now if you want to put some hours on your TV and break it in evenly, you can one, just use it, and especially playing HDR content that's full screen without black bars. But if you have the new Spears and Munzel disc, you can go to the panel aging test, which is gonna hit every single pixel equally. Also on this disc, you can check for uniformity on your panel by going through the different slides. And you wanna do this in HDR so that the luminance is always the same. Now after doing all of this, if you want to force a compensation cycle, so not a full pixel refresh, but just a typical few minute compensation cycle that the TV is going to do on its own after being on for a while and then you turn it off for five or six hours, you can go all the way down to retail mode settings and hit reset picture mode. This will reset all of your settings, so if you are going to do this step, I recommend doing it before the factory reset. Once you do that, uh, you have to unplug the TV, plug it back in, and then go to one of your sources, and then sit here and wait for a minute, and then it will pop up a prompt on the screen to trigger the compensation cycle. Now, I have already done this, so I'm not going to hit start, but once you hit start, basically the screen's going to turn off and then turn back on after about 10 minutes. So again, I recommend doing that before a factory reset, that way you don't have to redo all of your settings, because that will reset all of the settings. Now, the other option that you can do uh, is if you've registered your TV, you can go to the Sony offers here, and there's some stuff that it's going to give you for free. Uh, this is bonus offers. You can check out the extended warranty that Sony offers, different things. Uh, just one little extra thing that you can check out. So, at this point, your TV is pretty much all set up. Um, should cover most general devices and use cases. So I hope this video has helped you out. If it did, let me know in the comments below. It's been a long video, but I know uh, some people have been asking to do longer, slower kinds of videos like this. Uh, so hopefully it worked out. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all again in the next one soon.